we've got a special one for you today. This is my patient, Tom. He has had a shoulder reconstruction four days ago. So he is day four post-op. You can see he's day four post-op because he's still got his bandages on here. This one is a classic rotator cuff repair, super spinatus. The tear was two centimeters by 3.5, so a big tear. He's had that surgically repaired, meaning he's had anchors put in, he's had a sewn in. He's also had a bursectomy, so they've cleaned out his bursa. He's had a chromoplasty, they've made room under the roof of the shoulder so he can move his arm, and he's had a bicep tenodesis. Now, the reason he had a bicep tenodesis is one, he's over 40, and this bicep tenon is frayed. So when we have a look at that tenon, it's frayed, and the attachment point, the labrum, is frayed as well. So at this sort of age, there's no point in repairing that labrum, they do a tenonesis. So where that long head of bicep has come up, you see in here, this is where they've gone in here. Where it's come up, they've basically kept it in the groove by sewing and anchoring it in, all right? And this bicep tenon was sort of subluxing, slipping out of the groove. So it had to be anchored down anyway. There was no way he was gonna get through the shoulder surgery with it sort of subluxing, it would be a pain. So therefore, they've got a tenodesis and they snipped it off there, which then, takes the pressure off the labrum at the top. So good result for him because he is moving really well. You'll notice there's a bit of dye here with iodine, that sort of thing, um, various portals. What you can see down here, now if I just bring Tom's arm out to a little bit of external rotation, if you can look in there, this is fluid, okay? And this is just fluid post-surgery. You can see in this part here, normally his bicep's quite big and it's deactivated here because he's had the bicep surgery. So we see that where this has gone a bit sort of soft and flaccid through here. This is not muscle, this is fluid in here, which will then remove. Now, one of the things he's doing week one is to try and remove some of that fluid. So he needs to do an active elbow flexion and extension, which he can do, he's pretty good. He just needs to be careful. When he goes into extension, that's gonna pull on everything up here. So he just needs to be careful down there and then come up, he can't go quick, obviously. Now the reason he's doing elbow flexion extension is one, he's kept in the sling, right? So he's in a sling for six weeks. Of course he's out of the sling to do his exercises three times a day, week one. But if he keeps his elbow at 90 degrees in a sling for six weeks, it's gonna get really sore. So one job is to try and keep the elbow free. Second job is to actually act like a pump. What we don't sort of realize is when we move around without our arms in a sling, we're doing natural movement that helps pump lymphatic drainage. He needs to do that to act like a drainage system to get rid of some of that fluid. Because if it just sits there pooling there, it's gonna become a bit of a problem. So over the next week or two, you'll find that all just start drifting away back through his armpit and away we go. So he also works on his wrist, okay? Pretty boring stuff in the first week, but we can't do too much. There's no strengthening, right? It's just range of movement. It's stopping it seizing up. It's trying to drop his pain down freeing him up while he heals. You gotta think, he's doing sort of 10, 11 weeks of healing, range of movement stuff before any low, real load goes on 11, 12 weeks. So he needs to be really ready at the 11, 12 week mark, week mark which will be very interesting when we see him again at that point and see how his progress is. If he can fix all his range of movement stuff, then he can start his strengthening really well. So that's pretty easy. But the external rotation one is one that is always hard for people. Now, he's Tom for this one. He's actually struggling a little bit with internal. Now, of course, this is day four. It might be completely different by next week. But he can't get his arm all the way to his rib cage. Okay, so what he's going to try and do is let it drop down with the hand. Some people can instantly get all the way there. He's finding that's quite tight in here. So when he does his external rotation, he's also actually worked on a little bit of internal work where he's trying to go a little bit lower. It's okay to have it stretching, we just don't want acute sharp pain, and then he comes out. So some part of this work is done with a pole, some part of it's done with him just actually lying down. You can chuck me in that pole there. This one here, trusty old broomstick, you would have might have seen this from some of my videos. He's going to then push that out into external rotation. His limit this week is zero degrees. So if you look at 
where his elbow is. His elbow is a little bit out. He'll find it very hard to actually bring his elbow in. So he just puts that elbow where he can be comfortable. Then he needs to be as limited as zero degrees at that point, all right? So no point going past that. We don't want him going past that, but then he can come in. He's got to try and think, I've got to make this arm completely sort of dead. So he's not doing any active work. He's only doing passive work from the broomstick from this hand, okay? Um, that helps with an external rotation. If you get the external rotation right, you can move along pretty quick. So this is really good stuff for him. He's not doing any flexion work apart from the cradle stuff. He's not, he's not doing any abduction work. That's next week. Um, but he is doing horizontal flexion extension and abduction like that um, during this week. So like I said before, pretty boring stuff. But for him, so far, really good result. And what we're going to do is follow Tom over the next sort of 12 to 24 weeks and check in with him, show you how his progress is going so you can see if when he does his exercises, how he improves in each step. So when we change things, what he works on, and then you can see the improvement sort of every sort of four weeks, see how he's going on. Okay, so two other things that Tom is doing this week is what we call the cradle. Now, this is like he wants a short lever here, so he basically has this arm tucked in on the elbow, and this gives him a bit of security. He's, again, Got to be completely passive with this. We're not doing active movement. We're not doing strengthening. We just want his flexion a little bit better. Now, he's not ready for a pole. That comes later. So he's only allowed to do flexion with the other arm. So he does that in standing, but he goes into a, like a type of deadlift bent over position. So this position here, if he goes into that sort of deadlift type maneuver, that's the start position, right? He's going to come from to his chest, all right? and then he's gonna come out. His maximum is 90 degrees. Now, if you look at where his body is, 90 degrees is sort of about here. Okay, it's not way up here, it's there. So he's sort of getting around, yeah, 70, not bad, okay? And he doesn't need to push this. He's got weeks to get it to 90, so he's fine. And what this does is the gravity helps a little bit. He's not letting it hang off though. But the gravity helps turn his muscles off because he doesn't want active work, he wants passive. He's completely supported with this arm. Again, he's got to learn how to make it dead, hold it with the right, and just take it through the ranges. He's just got reps and sets to work on. Remember, this is three times a day. So he does all this work and then goes and puts the ice on, puts it back in the sling, and then waits for another three or four hours and then does it again. So that's the flexion extension. Then he's got a cradle where he's going horizontal flexion uh, abduction, abduction. So if we look at this, he's going to go and try and not move his upper body and just move his elbow, if you like. He's trying to push his elbow left and right. And this is really nice to feel. He'll feel like he's loosening himself up here. He just can't go so far that he's pulling on structures that hurt. Discomfort's okay. Tightness is okay. Pain is not, okay? The nasty, sharp pain. And again, he's also monitoring... If he does these exercises, when he's finished and puts the ice on, does he feel better? The whole aim for Tom is to get his confidence up, less pain, get it moving, and feel better afterwards for doing the exercises, not worse. So make sure if this is you at home and then you're doing your shoulder rehab, you're not worse after doing all this exercise. It's okay to feel discomfort, that's guaranteed, but then afterwards you want to feel better for doing it. Okay, come up again, Tom. So... Next week's in week two. The only thing he's adding on for week two, and I'll show you now because he's at day four, so he can do a little bit of this, but he's not going to do this for reps, is he's going to do abduction. You notice how he was quite cautious of just letting it hang. Okay, that's what you want to do. You want to go slow. It's okay for his arm to hang there like that. What's not okay is for him to move his arm. So he needs this to be completely dead again, passive, and so the push all comes from this side. So he's going to go straight into abduction, and that's as far as he's going to go for today. Because I'm just showing him what to do, because he's going to go away from Sunday, which is in three days' time, to then do that for a whole week. He's going to be doing this. I just got to make sure he's doing it correctly. His limit is going to be 60 degrees. So if you imagine like 90s out here, 60, a third of the way around, two thirds of the way around. That's how far he's going to get out to as far as his limit, all right? So he's just sitting around that sort of 20, 30 degrees. That's cool for today. He will stop that. He'll start on Sunday and then go by the time week three rolls around, he'll be way out at 60 degrees, feeling good. All right, see you next time.